Hello and welcome to Matters of the Heart, a series of shows where we talk about the pursuit of happiness in relationships, marriage, partnerships, and for some, the all elusive four letter word called love. We have with us a very exciting panel. Let me begin by introducing them to you. Manvi Gagru is with us today. She is a very successful actor playing the pivotal role of a girl in Mumbai trying to chase both love and her career in the very successful show, Four More Shots. Uh, we have with us Parnia Qureshi. She is one of India's leading style icons and a fashion entrepreneur. She gave birth to a fashion brand called Gur Organics in 2019. Yukutino is a holistic lifestyle coach who practices in the field of integrative medicine. He prescribes to his clients wellness, nutrition, sleep, exercise, love, and lots more. Anuradha Gupta is the founder and CEO for Vows for Eternity, a global matchmaking service. She will be joining us on the series and sharing her thoughts on marriage and relationships and how to successfully get there. On the show today, we discuss marriages. Do arranged marriages and introductions work or are we supposed to put ourselves out there and find love? Let's begin this conversation with Purnia Qureshi, who tied the knot last year. Purnia, how did you find your partner and how do you manage finding time for your very busy career and for your personal life? So I met uh, Sahil, who's my husband. I met him at a friend's wedding um, many years ago um, in Bangkok. And we stayed friends for very long. And I think, um, at least in my experience, because I've had other boyfriends before, that's really the nicest way, I think, to meet someone, to become a friend. So I think any relationship that starts on friendship is usually a good idea and healthy. It's anyway said that the first year is difficult for any married couple, but I think when you're really stuck to each other in the same apartment, it's even more difficult. And you know, as the rules relax and we could just go out a little bit more and do more of our work, I think our relationship became better and it became easier. Anu, as a businesswoman working across continents with modern views in a traditional business, do you think it's easy for people to find partners for marriage? You know, I've been doing this for over 10 years now and I think I've, you know, I see, I see the change in the last few years. The kind of people that I work with, they have the mobility, they, they leave their homes and they travel, whether it's for be it education, be it career. And, and really, when you start off in a new place, uh, you're really outside your comfort zone. You really struggle with how you meet someone. And that's, that's I think it's even more relevant and important that you have somebody who understands you, who gets a sense of who you are, and then connects you with somebody who's a little more like-minded. Uh, as a single woman, Manvi, what do you think? Are men intimidated by successful, single, independent women? Honestly, I don't know if intimidated is the right word to use, but I actually feel bad for them because I feel in this post Me Too era, so to say, a lot of the well-meaning men are very confused. And because they find themselves lost and in the middle of like caught uh, a deer caught in the headlight, like, you know, and then suddenly they end up doing or saying something which is exactly the opposite of what they want to say or do. I think that now a lot of the rules and boundaries are suddenly... It, they've all changed. They've all reshuffled. So a lot of the people are finding themselves not knowing what to do or what the right thing to do is and stuff because it's both ways, right? It's it's with it's across genders. Uh, Luke, do you think self confidence and emotional wellness play an important role while finding a partner for marriage? I think that'll have an impact on only weak men who are not grounded, because you know what you see on social media and stuff. You know, I mean, a lot of it is true. But if you're going to be a puppet and you don't have your own self-respect and values and you're going to change to be someone else, you know, I mean, that's the man's loss at the end of the day. You know, a lot of them are fearful, but you should have fear only if you have the intention of doing something wrong. Everyone makes mistakes, but you know which mistakes are completely non-tolerable. So if you cross that boundary, you pay the price. But if not, you know, I think every man has, has to have their own self-respect and learn how to handle women who are strong or not, or choose not to be with those kind of women. It's, everyone has a choice at the end of the day. Okay, uh, very quickly, if you could tell us, what do you think, does self-confidence and emotional wellness uh, help hugely when you're looking at things like love and marriage? I think it's everything. The residue of, self, of poor self-confidence is insecurity. And I don't think any relationship is happy if there's insecurity, because then there are trust issues, there are all of the issues that come with it. So I think it's so important for us to realize who we are before we get into a relationship. 
Today, a lot of men and women get into relationships thinking that their partner is going to fix them. It's nice to know that your partner may compliment you and your weaknesses. And, you know, that's, that's a beautiful partnership or a relationship. Imagine two perfect people in a marriage. It's never going to work. And when it comes to emotional wellness, how are you going to handle someone else's baggage? You can be patient, you can be a good listener, all of that. Those are good things that you read in a book. But I really think that now, especially since we have so much of exposure and we have time, everyone's not in a hurry to get married. I think everyone has to do their homework, men and women. Learn to draw your boundaries and don't just draw them, express them to your partner. If you can't operate within boundaries, don't take it forward because you are bound to have problems once the hormones settle down and that whole honeymoon pool period is over. That's the way I see it through the experience of dealing with so many people who are sick because they're emotionally sick. So this is a question for all of you. How do you define a successful marriage and do you think the definition evolves over the years? For, Nia, for me, I think um, a successful marriage is when two people define their own terms. No marriage in this world is the same as someone else's. You can't have two same marriages. As a modern, liberal thinking woman, um, I want to define my own terms. And, I, and that has to be something which I meet in the middle somewhere with what my husband thinks, what his idea of marriage is. And then we need to kind of come together and I guess that's where the compromise comes and figure out um, what do we want from life and from this marriage and what are our terms and what is our marriage like? And if we're able to achieve what we define as a successful marriage, I think it's a success. Uh, Manvi, how about you? You're young, not married. How do you view a successful marriage? I actually agree with Pernia because people are different. Uh, every relationship they have will be different. So you have to make your own rules. You have to decide what it is that you're willing to uh, let go of what are the things that you will not, you know that are deal breakers that you won't compromise on what are the things you will and you have to like Panya said that you have to meet the person midway somewhere if you really do want the marriage to work I also feel that um, uh, you know the way I think over, uh, over the years uh, of course I'm not uh, qualified to speak on marriage at all but I'm just these are just my observations that over the years how marriage has changed is that now we're looking more as two independent whole beings coming together and wanting to share their lives. Like, you know, as opposed to uh, two incomplete beings looking to each other to complete themselves or whatever, they have the option of not sharing their lives, but they still wish to. That's an ideal marriage, <laughs> I believe. I agree with both of you. Luke, you, you must have so many clients. Uh, they're dealing with well-being. I'm sure uh, well-being leads to a happier marriage as well. I don't think there can be anything like a happy marriage or a successful marriage. I think it's, there has to be success between the partners because there are always going to be ups and downs. And when people try to aim for a happy marriage, there's going to be more disappointment because there can never be continuous happiness. Impossible. You can have successful people who learn how to manage the happy times, learn how to get through the rough times. Marriage isn't the problem. It's a problem of conflict. And especially in today's time, you go back generations before, it was a very different institution of marriage. There was complete acceptance. There was the whole concept of sacrifice, all of that. Today, no, people are strong-minded. You have to draw your boundaries and decide up front, even before you decide to get married, what is okay? What is your place? What is my place? I'm not okay with this. This is a red flag. Anu, you have brought together over 1,000 couples. How do you define a successful marriage and how does it evolve? You know, I agree with what, what everybody here has said and uh, it's, uh, it's very well put. I think there is um, ultimately that space that two people share. Uh, only those two people know how it really is for them. But going into a marriage, I think it's really important and I speak to a lot of people who are when you are emotionally ready, you know, to share your life with someone, that's when it's really important that you focus on who is the right person for you. Introspection, I think, is very important to understand more about yourself. The difference between what you really need and what you want, the direction that you want to take, whether it's your goals, it's your take on life, it's your value system. All those need to be aligned because otherwise you're going to look in different directions and you're going to walk in those directions. I think acceptance is very, very important. There's a lot of time that goes in trying to change the other person. And the reality is that nobody, none of us are going to change. We are who we are. So when you love 
learn to love the person with all the flaws that each of us have because i think by 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 virtue of being human we all are intrinsically flawed anu touched on space so i have a question for all of you um have you ever checked your partner's phone for now we begin with you no i never have um i think um it has a lot to do with of course your own trust issues but also the way you've been brought up um my parents never opened my letters that came for me um when i was young my parents never checked my phone what about you manvi have you ever checked your partner's phone never and again i my reasoning is actually just because i wouldn't want uh, him to check my phone or my mail or something you know so it's uh, like that is actually the only rule that only thumb rule that i follow which is that i don't want to treat my partner in a way that i don't want to be treated it's as simple as that do what about you no never done that never will and i hope it's never done for me as well i know how about you we know each other's phone passwords but uh, but you know i've never i've never really checked the phone no i've been tempted a few times not because i have trust issues but just because what's what you know what's going on but no i never done it all right we have a very confident <laughs> set of panelists who are secure and uh, respect others privacy amazing we are either a bunch of uh, very conscientious uh, panel or we are all liars <laughs> <laughs> that aside <laughs> For all of you watching the show if you want to participate in the poll do head to our Instagram and Facebook pages As we move on I think we'll all agree that it's the small things that make a marriage uh happiness contentment ambition not just for yourself but also for your partner uh it's all about the small gestures that ensure longevity and happiness in a marriage we're now going to talk about what's an absolute no no in a relationship Anu let me begin with you uh take us through some deal breakers so i've heard a lot of a uh, lot of uh, what people don't want uh, over the years and i think with time and with with age the list of what one doesn't want increases but something that uh, that really comes to mind is um color of socks i think that really stands out i said two people up and they met each other and um, and and then um, i thought it was sort of it's going going to go really well because i thought they were very very strongly aligned on a lot of fundamental things and i heard back uh, from from the girl saying i never i can't believe it i i never want to meet this guy again and that really was a a deal breaker for her uh, she eventually did go on to meeting him another time and i'm sure he wore another pair of socks because uh, they got married and they have two wonderful kids now so so it, you know sometimes deal breakers uh, uh you know if you look past them and if you focus on on the person then a lot of times you realize that you know when you need to think is that really a deal breaker okay uh look what would be a deal breaker for you i think uh, emotional abuse when i say that you know using the past if you've been honest with someone and you shared your past but then everything every time something happens in the present you know the past is always brought up that's like an emotional card i think that's a deal breaker for sure and all, honestly i mean in a lot of my past relationships as well if someone asks for honesty i think they need to hold the space to manage it well a lot of people want honesty but they don't know how to handle it they use it against you and then why would you be honest again manvi how about you so oh, ambika there's a reason why i'm single <laughs> you know i have a whole list of and like on the last i was like anu was just telling us that you know as you as you uh, spend more time there's also uh, you, your list goes on increasing so there's of course the basic like uh they you can't be abusive physically or emotionally either way a new new uh thing to to be added to the list is uh, my socio political views that i they have to match i feel now that the kind of world that we are living in it's so polarized everything so we need to be very clear on that and for you what about you so i agree with luke but um, i would say continuous emotional abuse so that would be one i think disrespect certain times you can you can tolerate it like with a warning and there are certain times where it's just not excusable at all and it's a deal breaker um i would say inequality um in a relationship especially when it comes to gender roles that um you are a girl so hence um i get to do this and you don't or some you know something of that sort we have some more questions for all of you um do you ever let your partner talk without interrupting varnia i am really guilty of this just in fact yesterday sail had a chat with me and he's like you know that's not really polite and you always keep cutting me off and like i don't mean to because it's not because i'm trying to be rude or 
or like sabotage his conversation but i'm just so excited i can't control myself all right um look yeah i'm guilty for that yeah <laughs> it's really a circumstantial so if the conversation's boring i will interrupt because i just want to get it over with like asap i don't think it's necessary to give more time to that manvi if we are discussing something about the relationship then i let the person finish like if we're discussing a a, a movie or a, or a, you know some or an event or or you know something then there's a lot of interruption there it's like a debate like you know there's interjection and there's all of this we're putting each other's points across so actually it really depends on what the discussion is you make it sound very exciting i think you can have an audience for it <laughs> I know we move on to you. I think I'm I'm guilty of that most of the time. So it's very rare that I let my my husband sort of finish what he's saying without interrupting. When I'm not working, actually I'm personally such a lazy talker that I'm okay when everybody else is talking and I just <laughs> nod my head. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, um look the next question is in your opinion who's more complicated men or women? You want a direct answer or you want an indirect answer? I want a direct answer. Honestly, yeah, then I'm obviously I'm obviously going to say I find women more complicated. Okay? I mean if you want a direct answer but if you want the in between answer it really depends on the emotion see it's the emotions that are complicated because women see certain emotions differently from men and men see some emotions differently from women so right there there's conflict which means complication Purnia you want to say something I don't think this can be broken down in gender like is male more complicated than female or vice versa I think it depends on the person because I know men who are who are ex- extremely uh, all over the place when it comes to emotions and are very complicated and really hard to comprehend in the same way i know women who are really straightforward and you know quite seamless when it comes to emotions manvi i agree i don't i don't think it's a gender based thing with women there are just too many factors at play and especially when it comes to romantic relationships because they're thinking about marriage age of marriage age of children and you know wanting you know mother motherhood or no motherhood working or not you know there's so much so many factors at play so it it appears to be far more complicated anu how about you i feel that women are a lot more complicated than men i i believe that uh, you know men are from Mars and women from Venus I think that's very very true with most men uh, you know very often it's what you see is what you get but with women a lot of times what you see, most of the times in my experience what you see is may not be what you get we're now discussing equality in marriage it's a favorite topic with everybody but is it really a possibility I know I'm going to begin with you these days I feel you're referring more to financial um equality for me that's only one one part of a relationship and equality is so much more than than that but if you go further you know in terms of women being a lot more financially independent career driven all of that i think that's a great place to be in we also have to take a step back and see how we how we project that for a lot of Uh, Indian men it's still it's still relatively new. Ernie I can see you have an opinion on the matter tell me. I've been living all these thoughts this last um 11 months um of being married. So I think when you're financially equal in some way or the other um that leads to all other kinds of equality. If you are dependent on your boyfriend or your husband many men feel like then that that you because you're financially dependent on them hence you're not equal to them i mean i'm a educated woman i earn money so why am i not contributing i cannot expect to be dependent on him and then um in turn ask him for equality in other factors of life i think the mistake a lot of girls in our generation are making is that they want to have the cake and eat it too they want equality when it's convenient but they also want to be dependent and it and it doesn't work that way that's a very cool insight pornia luke what is your view on uh, equality in marriage i think the world's been projected very very wrongly with social media news channels and all of that stuff number one yes i respect financial equality in women women who aspire to grow their careers i have no problem about that but there's always one saying that i tell anyone you know i'll tell my daughter when she grows up whatever you want to do if you're responsible enough to bear the consequence of your decision go ahead and do it because you also have a lot of women who want like she rightly beautifully said they want a cake and they want to eat it too so they hold beautiful positions in the corporate world but at the same time they're bringing their kids to us their kids who have issues of not having a mom at home and they're not willing to make a change okay now she made a decision to do that that's fine what are you going to work around and then the mother gets more and more stressed and then she gets more and more sick so like i said if you're willing to play the game 
are you willing to bear the consequences as well? Luke, I know Purnia is dying to say something. I want to respond sure. to a couple of things. Um, so I, uh, about the little anecdote about the mother being at work and the child feeling ne neglected in a marriage, which is a team, shouldn't the father play a role in compensating some of that? So it's not the woman's responsibility alone to take care of the child just because she's uh, career driven and busy. And I want to add that um, equality is important because it's respect. Everybody needs respect. And um, when you feel that somebody is not treating you equal, you feel disrespected. Manvi, you wanted to say something? When a, a woman or a man, for that matter, says that they, they want equality in their relationship or their marriage, it's, it's that equality of agency. There's that, that, you know, they both have a say, they both have a voice and they have a, an equal opportunity to uh, voice their opinions. Okay, Anu, Anu, go ahead. I think this is really interesting and it's very, very important as well because so many times it's, you know, we talk about equality, but I think it's really about, it's really about having that space where both people are equally respected and valued. Ultimately, that's what it is. Uh, sometimes I speak to people and they said, you know, I know um, a deal breaker for me is um, that I should be allowed to work after marriage. And my first question is allowed to work? What, you know, what does that even mean? And why should, do you, will you allow your husband to work or will you allow your husband to do X? And y and z at home so i don't think it's it's allow, it's about a space where both are equally respected for the choices that they make whether it's working not working whatever that choice is i think ultimately that is equality uh, luke as a father of a girl how do you think the boys of the next generation should be raised so you gotta raise a boy like a man we all think we're right with whatever we say but we have to look at the generations above that's where you find the truth okay the least amount of rapes, the least amount of problems with women happened in the previous generations because there was something called respect. There were roles defined. A man has a role. Today, no one has a role because everyone wants to do everything. I'm sorry. You're trying I, to do everything. I, I don't agree with all. I don't Mami, what do you want you, to say? If you let me finish, if you let okay. me finish my oh. point, okay? My whole point is that men, there are difference. There are good boys, bad boys, good men, bad men. But when you look around and see what's happening today, it is exposure. A child, a boy between the age of two and nine, the subconscious mind is very open. What you put in that boy's mind in terms of values and everything, okay, becomes that person. Manvi? No, firstly, I don't uh, agree with the concept of real man and real woman. I mean, that just hardwires you further into gender stereotypes and gender roles. I don't think it's fair to say that the current generation, quote unquote, just has more problems. I mean, yes, there are problems, but there are different problems. Like, yes, we do talk about how our generation is overstimulated because we have, we are constantly bombarded with information. I don't think uh, rapes, there, there are more rapes happening. Uh, it's it, there are probably more rapes being reported. A lot of the women didn't even know what was happening to them was rape. And if if one says that it's because women are getting out of the house and they're working and they're enjoying a certain freedom and that's why crime against women is increasing, I need to remind everybody that the crime is being done by the men. Purnia? So I was going to just say uh, one of my main uh, reactions and points was um, rapes and sexual crimes are being reported more now and more than being reported now we have more avenues to speak about them we have social media and women are more educated they are more confident to come forth so I really don't think um, that can be a basis of any argument or any point no um, but I'd like to uh, just I, get back it's not an I, argument why are we talking about rape and we're talking argument. about what men should be I don't agree that men should be brought up as men. I mean, we are finally breaking out and we're finally kind of changing this whole notion that there are gender roles. And to say that men have to be brought up as men, I think is regressive and it's, pu um, it's pushing us back. According to me, they should be brought up in the same manner as a good human with the right value systems and with the right values that, they, that apply to both. Anu, go ahead. You know, my son, he's... He's, he's, a few, he's four years old now and he, he fell down and said, I'm a strong boy and that's why I didn't cry. I said, no. I said, Dishan, being a strong boy means that you know that you can cry and it's okay if you cry. Whether it means for a man breaking down sometimes and saying, you know, I, I feel vulnerable. For me, that's, that's being a real man. On that note, uh, we have really exceeded our time on the show, but I will uh, go back to how we started, which is how to find a partner and which is the best way? Is it love arranged? Do you, do you just put yourself out there and hope love finds you? Uh, Luke, your view? 
No, I think you've got to be open to it. If you don't know what you want, oh, you're going to get whatever comes your way. And most women and men don't know what they want. They only know what they want after they've got into a relationship. Manvi, let me know when you find out. <laughs> find out. <laughs> no, but I think, I think uh, uh, you have to be open to it. And once you find love, uh, if you want it to work, then there is active work that goes on from both the partners. So a relationship is work in progress. Uh, Parnia? Um, I think human beings are work in progress. Oh, yes, yeah. But I think the best way of knowing what you want is knowing yourself. There's no right or wrong way and there's no timeline or time limit. I mean, it just really depends on on, on person to person. Anu, what is your view? What's the best way of finding a partner? I think it's always important that the person gets you. He understands who you are. So you don't have to spend a lifetime translating your soul. It's time to wrap this episode. I will see you again next week with Anuradha to discuss matters of the heart. We will be focusing on the wedding vows and do we really uphold to them? Uh, there's also a lot of talk about men being from Mars and women from Venus. Is that really true? Thank you all of you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.